A badass looking Kaldari ship with powerful shields and hard hitting missiles, and it's a heavy assault cruiser to boot. What's not to love about the Cerberus? Especially since heavy assault cruisers are one of my favourite classes of vessels in EVE Online, and I'm on a bit of a binge at the moment to showcase them all in C3 Ratting. The aim of this video is to find out if there is a fit for the Cerberus that can run all three of the C3 combat sites without needing to refit between them. This means that whilst your friends are all stuck running Fortification Frontier Strongholds, you can be running all four of the sites and just laughing at them as you make your ISK in one of the coolest ships available in EVE Online. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online where we're going to be taking another look at the Kaldari State's heavy assault cruiser, the Cerberus. I've already showcased this in Abyssal Dead Spaces, but since I'm running a little bit of a mini-series at the moment taking a look at each of the HACs and seeing how they cope with C3 wormhole ratting, I thought it was a good time to come back to one of my favourite ships in the game and see how this one would do. The aim of this is one ship, one fit, all four combat sites. So do be aware that when we get to the fitting section, I'm sure there are some of you that have some really cool ideas about how the Cerberus can be changed to run each individual C3 combat site specifically. But this is a one size fits all approach to avoid having to use mobile depots or heading back to refit, depending on the content that you can find. Now, I've always loved the Cerberus. I think the Caracal is a really cool looking hull, but it is just a little bit too thin and flimsy looking for me. And the Cerberus bulks it up nicely. I also just love the heavy assault cruisers. I think these are so much fun to fly. So getting to showcase one of my favorite ships for a second time on this channel just feels really cool. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know, drop a comment down below. And while you're down there, please take that extra second to hit the like button. It really helps the channel out more than I think a lot of people realize. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can head across to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar, and my Redbubble merchandise store as well. And I'm always grateful for every single dollar that helps keep me making content like this. It really means the world to me. Finally, if you are fairly new to EVE Online, I have a referral link in the description down below as well. You can click onto that, sign in with your account. It's on the official EVE website, so you don't have to worry about any strange doohickory going on there. That will earn you 1 million free skill points. I do get a small kickback for that as well, but the million free skill points can really help out new players, and anyone can use this regardless of how old the account is, as long as they haven't used a referral code beforehand. Finally, if you are looking for a fun group of guys to talk to, come join the Catskull Discord, also in the description down below. Loads of folks playing EVE Online who are happy to give advice and just talk with you about the game, as well as if you do want to join Catskull and find us out in Wormhole Space and fly alongside us, that's where you apply to join our corporation. All of that said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about the Kaldari State's heavy assault cruiser, the Cerberus. At this point in the video, I like to talk about the hull itself with the different characteristics and bonuses available to it. Now, because I have covered this ship already in an Abyssal Dead Space video, if you've watched that one, use the timestamps in the description down below to skip ahead to the rest of the video looking at the fit and the combat demonstration itself, because most of this is just going to be repeating what was said there. That said though, let's jump right into having a look at the Cerberus. So, first of all, we have a roll bonus. This is a heavy assault cruiser, so we have the usual ability to fit assault damage controls. Now, you might be thinking, what on earth is an assault damage control? Essentially, this is a special module that can only be fitted to assault frigates or heavy assault cruisers, and if you're not sure if the ship you're looking to fit falls under that, well, you can just mouse over and it'll give you a nice little list here of every ship that can fit this particular module. Now, like a standard damage control unit, an assault damage control has a passive bonus to the hull damage, armor damage, and shield damage resistances on your ship. Just having this fitted will increase your hull damage resistances by 25%, your armor by 7.5, and your shield by 5. And you may notice that's not quite as good as a standard damage control unit. So you might be thinking, Benzi, why on earth would I fit one of these when I could just fit a standard damage control unit? And in certain situations, you might be right. However, with the assault damage control, it does have an activatable ability. You can activate it, and for the next 8.78 seconds, basically 9 seconds, your resistances are massively increased. It then does go on a whopping 150 second cooldown, so this basically forms 
becomes a panic button. An oh crap I'm taking too much damage button that allows you to massively reduce the incoming damage to your ship, which will allow you to then wrap your shields up that little bit higher without having to panic all that much. We'll talk about this a little bit more later. You'll see it in the fitting section where I'll showcase how it affects our resistances and you'll see it in the damage in the uh, combat section later on as well. Anyway, back to the Cerberus itself. Being a Kaldari cruiser, we get bonuses from Kaldari cruiser, and being a heavy assault cruiser, we get bonuses from the heavy assault cruiser skills. Who'd have thought it, right? It's almost like they named these fairly comprehensively. Now, Kaldari cruiser, you're going to actually have to have at five in order to even undock the Cerberus. So assume, you, I'm going to assume, obviously, that you're going to have Kaldari cruiser five. This is going to give us a 5%, 25% in total bonus to kinetic light missile, heavy missile, and heavy assault missile damage. This means, except in excruciatingly rare circumstances, we are going to be using Scourge missiles. It is pointless using Nova, Mjolnir, or Inferno in everything but the most uncommon of situations. You're going to be using those kinetic Scourge missiles 99% of the time that you are in a Cerberus. Get that into your head now. I've seen a lot of people flying these, trying to use other missiles, and wondering why the DPS isn't quite as high as they're seeing in my videos here. You also get a whopping 100% bonus to heavy assault missile maximum velocity. Would you look at that? One of my favorite weapon systems in the game gets a whopping range bonus courtesy of the Kaldari Cruiser skill. You might be beginning to wonder, beginning to understand rather, why I really like this vessel. Then we have the Heavy Assault Cruiser skill. This is slightly different. If you've watched my videos on things like the Sacrilege and the Munin, then the Cerberus is going to be a little bit more unusual in that you do actually genuinely want to get this all the way to Heavy Assault 5 because it is going to increase your survivability dramatically. Don't even bother undocking this without Heavy Assault Cruiser 4, but you probably want to get it to 5. Why? Because at level 4, you're getting a 30% bonus to the shield booster amount. At 5, you're getting a 37 point. 5% bonus to shield booster amount and that amount of tank can be absolutely massive really worth getting that fifth level in the skill if this is a ship that you're looking to fly because the survivability skill is on the what I would refer to as the optional one because Kaldari Cruiser you're going to have to five heavy assault you might decide to stop at four I really recommend getting it to five though. We then also get a 20% at level four bonus to rapid light missile, heavy missile, and heavy assault missile launcher rate of fire. 20% is nice, 25% is better, but it's mainly the shield booster amount that is gonna want you to push up to heavy assault cruiser five. As for the fit itself, before we get into the details, please remember this is designed as a one size fits all fit. Essentially, this is going to be running all four of the different C3 combat sites. And you might find that there are bits of this fit that work better in some sites and not in others, and things that you might want to tweak to make it more specific to individual sites. Like you may decide that you're only going to be running Fortification Frontier Strongholds because there's no one else in your corporation running them. Therefore, you can do away with some of the tank and just increase the DPS or vice versa for different sites, that kind of thing. Ultimately, one size fits all. This is the generic fit, designed so that you can run all four combat sites without needing to refit between any of them. This will also be in the description down below, so you can copy paste it into the game to see how it goes with your skills, and you can also have a look at it in Pyfer or whatever you want to do with it. It's there linked in the description. So, the details. Let's start with the high slots. Of course we're using heavy assault missile launches because we've got range bonuses to them, and using standard Kaldari Navy Scourge, you can see that we are getting 38 kilometer range. Now, you can still have, uh, like, rage in here as well, and maybe even Javelin. I don't think Javelin are really necessary for this fit. Rage can be useful for just being able to hit things that little bit harder when you're close to them. We do need to have some form of ammunition that can clear the 30 kilometer distance though, because awakened up holders like to orbit at 30 kilometers. They like to web you and make sure that you can't get any closer than that. So if you're not able to get 30 kilometer range, you're not going to be able to handle the awakened up holders. Now, for the demonstration here, I'm just going to be using Kaldari Navy Scourge Heavy Assault Missiles, just to keep it simple. That said, I do strongly recommend that you carry Rages with you as well. That way, when you are orbiting the battleships and you're nice and close, you can swap to the Rages that have shorter range and worse application, but considerably higher damage. I think you can get to almost 800 DPS with the right fit, and maybe a couple of implants here um, using that, so that is worth paying attention to. But remember, you need at 
at least something that can hit beyond 30 kilometers, ideally beyond 32, due to the fact that if you are approaching an enemy as it's pulling away from you, when your missiles launch, they have a 30 kilometer range from the point that they launched. Therefore, if they are flying towards something that is moving away, the thing that is moving away may have gone beyond the 30 kilometer distance by the time the missiles actually reach them. Therefore, missing. Missiles, missing. You know, it's kind of in the name, but there we go. For the mid slots, we are shield tanking this bad boy. Of course we are. Dread Guristus Large Shield Booster. Nice heavy amounts of rep there coming out the gate. 347 HP per 3.2 seconds. This gives us a really nice overall shield boost rate here of 108.3 HP per second. Very, very nice. We're also going to be running a multi-spectrum shield hardener too in order to push those resistances up. And on the subject of resistances, you can see that with all of that active, our lowest resistance is 66% EM, 68% explosive, then a whopping 81% on kinetic and 87 on thermal. Those are your passive resistances. But if you need to, if you're thinking you're about to take a bit of damage and you decide to activate that assault damage control, which we are of course putting in the bottom, I've gone for an assault damage control too because I have the abilities, but the FFR or whatever it's called will work really nicely as well. With that active for those nine seconds our lowest electromagnetic resistance is all the way up at 91 percent which means 91 percent of the electromagnetic damage coming through is going to be absorbed oh no that enemy's just hit you for a thousand electromagnetic damage you've only taken 90 that is the power of the assault damage control and you can see it goes all the way up to 97 percent on thermal so only three percent of their thermal damage is actually going to hit you that is pretty darn powerful. For the rest of the mid slots though, I need a little bit of application, especially against ships that are a little bit closer to us. As such, I've gone for a Stasis Web of Fire 2. Only a 10 kilometer range, but reduces the target ship's velocity by 60%. It's a good option for hitting those close orbiting frigates. That said, if you really want to, you could go for something like a Federation Navy, but the 14 kilometers still isn't gonna be enough to help you web the cruisers that like to orbit at 15. Ultimately, I just go for a standard stasis Web of Fire 2. You can bling it up a bit higher if you want, but the Web of Fire 2 is gonna do the job mostly. It's just for the frigates, basically. We don't really worry about anything else because the battleships are so big, we get really good application against them anyway, and the cruisers tend to orbit outside even the faction webs. Finally then, a little bit of cap stability from a Republic Fleet large cap battery and a 10 Mega Newton Afterburner 2 just to help us maneuver around the site a little bit better. Now our low slots here constitute a reactor control unit too because we need a bit of extra power grid in order to fit everything, so we're going to be using that just to get a little bit of extra fitting space alongside two ballistic control system 2s. Again, some people do like to bling these, I don't really see the point. We're getting 571.4 DPS out of this as standard, you'll get a lot more if you're using rages rather than standard Kaldari Navy, but again, kind of up to you. You might decide that if you've got good enough fitting skills, you might be able to drop this and fit the react reactor control and fit another BCU. I can with the skills that I've got, but I'm showcasing this without having quite as high skills as I know that I'm running. Finally then, we end with the rigs. Our rigs here are both medium EM shield reinforcer twos. This is just to pull up that electromagnetic resistance a little bit higher, because without it, it is a ridiculously low amount of electromagnetic resistance. And when the sleepers have those big, heavy electromagnetic and thermal turrets hitting you, yeah, you want to be able to absorb as much of that as possible. So really, that is what we're going for here. And you may be thinking, hang on, Benzie, this doesn't look cap stable at all. Aren't you going to be muted to hell whilst in those sites? Well, yes, you kind of are. So we do need to be able to cycle the shield booster. You'll see that without the shield booster on, we have 43.3 gigajoules per second of delta. That is an insane amount of capacitor stability. And you just cycle when you need it, when you're taking damage, and then you'll rep up nice and quickly, then turn it off to let your capacitor recharge. Very good capacitor recharge rate on this very fast regenerating cap. We don't stress too much about the amount of neutralization coming, but obviously we just need to be aware there are going to be enemies out there that are neutralizing us. They gonna have to die first. They are going to have to die first and they are going to have to die quickly. Fortunately, we have that capability. 
Finally, we do have drones, 15 megabits per second of drone bandwidth. Put whatever the hell you fancy in here. You'll actually see I've only got two active at the moment because I lost one in the site earlier and I've forgotten to refit it before hitting record because I'm an absolute numpty. But essentially, it's really not worth stressing about. With all three drones in there, you're still only gonna be getting around 50 DPS out of them. Just shove in whatever the hell you fancy. I tend to run Hornet 2s, um, but it's entirely up to you. I know some people prefer Hobgoblins or whatever just use whatever i don't even necessarily use the drones in the combat sites because they do so little damage to the actual dps of the fit Anyway, all that said and done then, that's the fit. Remember, it's in the description down below if you want to drop it into Pypha or into game to see how it works with your skills. Let me know if you have any changes you think will work nicely. Otherwise, let's jump into the combat demonstration, shall we? Now, before we get into the combat demonstration proper, I do, do just want to demonstrate that I don't just grab a fit, throw it into the sites, record the footage, and then call it a day. No, I do thoroughly test every fit that I'm doing, and I play around with multiple different options. You'll see I'm running a very different fit here that was using like a shield booster, um, amp shield boost amplifier, and an EM resist, and all this kind of thing as well. It was not nearly cap stable enough. You'll see here wave three of the first fortification frontier stronghold I came into muted me out in seconds the Awakened Upholder and the Sleepless Upholder completely screwed with me and I started taking massive amounts of damage on the shield, massive amounts of damage on the hull. I'm just warp out quickly as possible. Don't even bother to recall the drones. Can I make it out in time? Am I going to make it out in time? That's a lot of hull damage. Oh boy, there we go. Yes, just about made it out by the literal skin of my teeth. 6% structure remaining. Oh boy, time to take that one back to the station and rethink that fit. Just to reiterate, that brief fail back there was a very different fit to the one I've showcased. I went back and rethought what the fit was going to do, and I came back with this one, and I ran it through a load of sites, tested it, did tweak it again later, but I found that this was the best way to do it. Anyway, Fortification Frontier Stronghold, my personal favourite of these. It's the one that most people tend to run. They are pretty straightforward, and there's not all that much to say. If you've watched a load of my content, you can probably skip the Fortification Frontier Stronghold demonstration. It's standard early affair. But for those of you who haven't watched these before or just here to see the Cerberus do it in specific, let's jump right in. So, wave one, two emergent defenders and two awakened defenders. The cruisers are just standard DPS cruisers, not a problem at all. Ultimately, we are just going to not really worry about them. We're just going to shoot those things in the face eventually. We're going to go for the emergent defenders first of all. Emergent defenders are frigates. They have webs. They're going to mess with our drones if we even bother using them. They are slightly harder to hit, but not a problem here for the Cerberus, as you can see. But the most important part is it's the Awakened Defenders who are the trigger. So we want to kill the Awakened Defenders second, because you kill those two Awakened Defenders first of all, you're going to get Wave 2 spawn with the Emergent Defenders still with you, and that's not fun. So get rid of the Emergent Defenders, get those webs off you, use your own webs just to make sure you're applying damage as quickly as possible, then go after the two Awakened Defenders for Wave 2 to start spawning. You'll see that I have, of course, kept my traversal up. I'm not bothering to orbit, I'm just flying kind of in a straight line, keeping my traversal up against the targets, whilst staying fairly close to that circular structure in the centre, because that is where most of the enemies are going to spawn close to. I kind of know where the spawn lines are in this, so it's one of those things I try to move towards that spawn distance, so that when Wave 2 spawns, I'm kind of sitting right on top of it. Now, when Wave 2 does spawn, you've got two more of those Awakened Defenders. Standard DPS cruisers, not that much of a threat to us. They orbit at 15 kilometers and they're fairly slow moving, so we can get close to them quite easily. But we do have two Awakened Upholders. Upholders are everyone's worst nightmare in these blasted things. They orbit you at 30 kilometers away. They web you to stop you getting any closer to that. And they have neutralization to the tune of six gigajoules per second each. Unfortunately, the Awakened Upholders are also the triggers for Wave 3, so we can't kill both of them or we're going to trigger early. Not a good thing. We're going to kill one of those Awakened Upholders as quickly as possible to get that newt off us and to remove one of the webs, thus increasing our speed and reducing the amount of damage that we take from everything else. One Awakened Upholder down, go for two Awakened Defenders, kill both of those, then come back to the Awakened Upholder. The Cerberus' range bonuses mean as long as you're not using rage missiles, you should be absolutely fine to hit with things like the Kaldari Navy or Javelins. As I said, Javelins to me are kind of overkill, you don't need that kind of range. Standard Kaldari Navy heavy assault missile will do the job quite nicely. 
With that second Awakened Upholder down, Wave 3 will spawn in, and this again has another Sleep uh, Awakened Upholder in it with its web and its newt. It also has a Sleepless Upholder, a battleship with a neutralizer, an Awakened Preserver, which is a remote rep cruiser, and two more of those piddly pathetic Awakened Defenders that we just don't really care about. Because we've got that Awakened Upholder, and you've probably got the Kaldari Navy Scourge missiles already fitted, therefore you've got the range to take the Upholder, take that out first. Get rid of the six gigajoules of neutralization that that Upholder is hitting you with before we then start to approach the battleship. Don't go in a straight line towards it because that is how you die. Make sure you are spiraling in, trying to get yourself to sort of a 10 kilometer or five kilometer orbit around it, keeping your traversal up at all times. Now, you do, of course, have the assault damage control unit. So if you think that whilst you're approaching, your traversal isn't particularly high, you don't have a good enough angular velocity and you're going to start taking some damage from that battleship, pop the assault damage control unit whilst you spiral inwards. We're not actually going to take out the Sleepless Upholder as our second option, though. We're going to be going after the Awakened Preserver. That remote rep is going to make going after the battleship really annoying, because it's going to be repairing the damage you're doing as you're doing it. But because remote reps can't be run on the ship that is using them, well, we're going to take out that Awakened Preserver first. Fortunately, it's fairly slow and it's got fairly light HP, so it does go down fairly quickly. With the Preserver and the Upholder both dead, we now go after the Sleepless Upholder battleship just because it's neuting us to the tune of 10 gigajoules per second. Not really a problem for the Cerberus, you should be fine as long as you're properly cycling your shield booster, but it's still worth taking out. With the Upholder dead, it's just the two Awakened Defenders. You've pretty much completed everything difficult in the site by that point. Pop those two Awakened Defenders, grab your loot, and move to the next site. If the Fortification Frontier Stronghold is considered one of the easier C3 combat sites, then the Outpost Frontier is often considered the toughest one. Fortunately, the Cerberus doesn't really have much difficulty with this either. Just remember to pop the Assault Damage Control as you land on site, because you've got three Argos turrets that are going to hit you. They have very poor tracking, but incredibly high alpha. They are going to shoot you the second you land on grid as you're trying to get your traversal up. So get that Assault Damage Control unit active as you're arriving to avoid that incoming damage. Now, we have those three sentry guns, but we also have a battleship, a sleepless defender that is armed with a stasis web of fire. What makes an outpost frontier a little bit trickier than some of the other sites is that it's all about your ability to manually pilot as a pilot. So you're going to need to keep your traversal up against three stationary targets, all the while the sleepless defender is going to be orbiting and trying to move around you as well. So it's very easy to end up in a situation where you feel like you've got your traversal up against the three Argos turrets, only to find that the sleepless defender is now exactly on your six and hitting you for a bucket load of damage because you have zero angular velocity compared to it and it's just getting wrecking shots off on you. So you do need to be aware of that. Keep an eye on where that battleship is. We're going to take the Argos turrets down first because the Sleepless Defender is the trigger. And also Argos is a shop that you'll crikey. If you know the UK, Argos is basically the running joke. It's the shop that is so British you have to queue twice. You kind of go into there and you look th up what you want to buy in a massive catalogue that requires, you know, several months of training at a gym in order to reach the index, only for you to then go, oh, I like the look of this item. You have to do a little stock check on a computer, and then once you've decided that, yeah, actually, the item you want is in stock, you write it down with a little betting slip pencil and a little tiny piece of paper, take it to the counter, pay for it, and then you have to queue up again while they go into the warehouse out back and actually find the damn thing that you're trying to buy. So so yeah, Argos, the shop's so British you have to queue twice. That's why I like shooting these turrets, because it just, you know, it makes me feel like, oh, I'm getting a little bit of revenge for having to stand in the queue so often. Anyway, take out the three sentry guns, then go for the battleship. That will trigger wave number two. Now, if wave number one was a little bit scary with three turrets doing massive damage and a battleship moving around you, wave two is a fresh reprieve. This is by far the easiest and most basic wave in any of the C3 anomalies. It's four awakened defenders. You know those piddly cruisers that do almost nothing? Yeah, you got four of them, and they are the trigger. So just kill all four of them in whatever order you like. And if you feel like, oh, my shield's a little bit low or my capacitor's a little bit low, Take the opportunity just to regen that up a little bit. You can turn your shield booster off for a while, let your capacitor come back up and just do a couple of cycles and then kill, out, uh, kill off the last of those cruisers. They're really no threat to you whatsoever at this point in something like a Cerberus. You can quite happily just munch through them and trigger wave three. 
So, you know, I suppose the, tri the the difficulty is, if you're in lower skills, just, you know, not triggering wave three before you're ready for it. Because wave three, oh boy, that is definitely the one that makes the, uh, the outpost frontier that little bit scarier. This thing has two battleships in it, sleepless defenders that have webs. Again, massive alpha damage on their turret weapons, so you need your traversal up as fast as possible. Use the assault damage control if you have to whilst getting your traversal up. You're going to want to approach at sort of a 45 degree angle, so you're getting closer, but you're not going in a straight line towards them, and slowly spiral inwards until you're orbiting around the 5,000 meter mark. That that point, that particular battleship that you're orbiting will be struggling to hit you. The trouble is, both of those battleships are going to be trying to keep you at range, they're going to be webbing you, and there are four emergent defender frigates that are going to be webbing you as well. Oh boy, doesn't that sound like fun. Yeah, so basically you're going to be trying to get close to one of those sleepless defender battleships as quickly as possible whilst ma maintaining as much traversal as you can. Keep that angular velocity nice and high. Whilst you are approaching, however, punch all four of those frigates in the face as hard and fast as you can. Use your webifiers, make sure that you are doing as much damage to those as quickly as possible, get rid of the four of those. You'll probably have all four frigates dead before you start to orbit your first sleepless defender. If you are using rage missiles at this point, this is when you swap to them, you punch that sleepless defender as quickly and hardly as possible. When it goes boom, you just rinse and repeat on the other one, orbit around it and kill it till it's dead. That simple. If I'm being honest, I was expecting the Aru's constructs to actually be the scariest of the four C3 sites, and it's really not for the Cerberus. This thing is actually surprisingly straightforward. Now, when you come into the first wave, you've got two sentry guns here, wakeful sentries. These are similar to the Argos turrets, very high alpha damage, um, but typically poor tracking. Get your traversal up against those, and they become pretty much not a threat. The issue is we've got four awakened upholders. Oh yes, everyone's favorite the Awakened Upholders, those cruisers that like to orbit at 30 kilometers whilst neutralizing you and webbing you. And there's four of the bastards in this one. Yeah, that's not fun. And that's if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, you're also going to get an Awakened Preserver, a cruiser that has the ability to remote rep everything else nearby. Now, despite the fact that it has a remote rep, the Awakened Upholders are so low HP, they do go down really quickly. So I would strongly suggest get your traversal up against those two turrets as quickly as possible, and then just punch three of those Awakened Upholders in the face. The fourth one is the trigger. We don't want to kill it just yet. But taking out three of those Awakened Upholders gets rid of three of the webs on us, and it takes away three of the six gigajoules per second uh, neutralizers. Having 24 gigajoules of neutralization per second does really hurt whilst you're trying to run the shield booster. So get rid of those quickly, efficiently, and then start to take down the turrets. If you do have the Awakened Preserver, however, go for three Awakened Uploaders, then take the Preserver, then st uh, start to take on the turrets. Again, as long as you're keeping your traversal up against those turrets, the shield booster should have no issue kind of keeping on top of the damage that you're taking. That said, if you do screw up your traversal and find yourself approaching a target a little bit too directly, it may be worth using that assault damage control just to keep on top of things to stop you having to basically constantly keep the shield booster running or worse, hit armor whilst trying to get rid of those awakened upholders. Take those out, three upholders, then the awakened preserver if you have it, before going for the two turrets. Once those are down, you then go for that final upholder and trigger wave two. Wave two is a battleship, a sleepless defender with a web. That's your trigger, so we're going to largely ignore it. We're going to want to try and spiral in on it, get within 5,000 meters um, and start orbiting it. Remember, keep your traversal up because it is a battleship. It hits hard if it manages to hit you. The trick is not letting it hit you. The trouble is we've got four emergent defenders armed with webs. Those are going to be slowing you right the hell down. Fortunately, they're frigates and they're not the trigger, so they do die really quite easily and quite quickly. So you can just hit those hard and fast and then just get into the business of properly approaching and orbiting that sleepless defender and then taking that out. Again, if you're using rages, now is a good time. Use the web of fire to make sure that they're applying as well as they can. Um, but then just, you know, kind of punch all the frigates in the face and then finish off the defender. Wave three then, once the defender goes down, is a sleepless upholder battleship. This is a neutralizing battleship with two cruisers, awakened preservers. Those are both remote reps. 
Now, the battleship itself, the neutralizer, is 10 gigajoules per second, which does sound kind of scary, but the Cerberus doesn't care. As long as you are comfortably using your shield booster, you know, effectively, you're not just, you know, leaving it running the entire time, you should be absolutely fine because you've got a really good capacitor recharge rate on this vessel. Um, a 10 gigajoules per second newt isn't actually all that much to worry about. Instead, we're going to take out those awakened preservers as quickly as possible. Same old story. Try and get close to the sleepless upholder so that we can orbit it and thus reduce the amount of damage it's able to do because it's not going to be able to hit us, but take out the awakened preservers first. Now, Awakened Preservers are using remote reps. They can't rep themselves, but they can rep each other. If you're trying to shoot the battleship, both of them can rep the battleship, and so you're fighting two remote repairers, which is just a dumbass idea. Don't do it. Take out one of the cruisers first. That cruiser is going to be getting remote repped by the other one, but you should be able to out DPS that rep fairly comfortably. And ultimately, there's not really much else you can do, you know? So you punch that first Awakened Preserver in the face till it's dead. Then you go after the second one, which now no longer has the ability to remote rep itself. It can't rep itself. It's got no reps from the other ship coming, so it'll go down that little bit faster. Do that while orbiting the battleship, and that wave is super, super easy. Again, it's worth pointing out that I've never had to overheat anything in any of the sites with the Cerberus. This ship runs these things like butter. Finally then, we come to the Solar Cell, and oh boy, this one has its ups and downs. The first wave is guaranteed to be an Awakened Upholder. Those wonderful ships that orbit at 30 kilometers with a Web and a Newt, that's going to be your priority. No matter what else is in this wave, that Awakened Upholder is the first thing to die, just because the web's annoying, just because the Neutralizer is annoying. Six gigajoules per second coming just from that. You're also guaranteed to have an Emergent Preserver, that is a frigate with a Scram, a Web and a Newt. The new on the frigate, those only three gigajoules per second, and quite frankly, we laugh at that. <laughs> What's three gigajoules a second going to do to a Cerberus? Nothing. Literally nothing. You're very cap, you know, you're practically, well, you're not cap stable when running the shield booster at all, but it, it does nothing. It does nothing. The second you turn the shield booster off, that three gigajoules per second is massively outclassified by the amount of repping you've got, in, uh, by the amount of capacitor boosting that's just going to be happening naturally. It's really, really fast to recharge. You don't have to worry about it. The downside of that frigate is that it is the trigger and it has a scram. It likes to orbit closely. It's going to keep that scram on you. This does mean if you need to make a getaway, you're going to have to pop that frigate quickly and warp away, at which point you've spawned wave three, possibly still with the awakened up holder around. Um, wave two, sorry, with the awakened up holder around. And that does become problematic. I will often just abandon a site if I have to do that. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. There's also the chance of a battleship being in that opening wave asleep plus defender this has a web essentially take the upholder out first then go for the battleship then take out the frigate and trigger wave number two you can actually see as well how quickly that first wave goes because whilst i'm talking about this i don't need to load further footage for wave two we're already in it Wave number two, again, Awakened Up Holder, get rid of it first. It's as simple as that. You see an Awakened Up Holder, if it's not a trigger, kill it. Straight off uh, straight off the bat, nice and easy like that. Get rid of that neutralization on you, get rid of that web on you. They die nice and quickly, and they have this annoying habit of just sitting at 30 kilometers, so you want to take it out quickly while you're close to it. We then have three other cruisers, all Awakened Defenders. These are not much of a threat at all. They're standard DPS cruisers, don't really do much to you. We've got two Emergent Defender Frigates with webs and two Emergent Upholder Frigates with remote reps and newts. Annoyingly, those are the trigger. Again, they're only three gigajoules per second of neutralization, so with both of them alive, you're getting six gigajoules on top of the six that the Upholder has, but we've hopefully already killed the Upholder. Those Emergent Upholders, you want to kill one of them just to get rid of that remote rep and to get rid of another three gigajoules per second of neutralization. You're now essentially going to have a web on you there's going to be one remote repairer and one newt and that newt again is only a three gigajoule per second so we don't really care about it anymore so we've taken out one awakened upholder one emergent upholder we now go for the emergent defenders both of them get those final two webs off you pop those frigates nice and quickly and easily and all done and dusted with that done, you take the two Awakened Defenders out, they're cruisers, you apply to them really easily. They tend to try and orbit at 15 kilometers, so you're gonna have no issues keeping in range with them. Then we go back for that second Emergent Upholder and kill it, spawning in wave three. 
Now wave three is where things get a little bit spicy in this particular anomaly. We have two battleships, a sleepless preserver with remote reps and a sleepless defender with webs. Now, if this weren't enough, we've also got two Awakened Defenders in there that are just straight up DPS cruisers. They're not a huge threat, but it is annoying that whilst you're trying to get into uh, everything else, you are going to be having those shoot at you. I strongly recommend getting your traversal up quickly, spiraling in on the Sleepless Preserver. Once you're at a five kilometer orbit going around that thing, it's not gonna be able to hit you anymore. And it's remote reps can't be used on itself. So we're gonna take it out first because trying to go for the cruisers while a battleship's remote repping them, not fun. Trying to go for the other battleship whilst the uh, preserver is remote repping it, not fun at all. Killing the remote repping sleepless preserver, lots of fun. Do it, shoot it till it dies. Then we go after the second sleepless defender just to get rid of that web before finishing off the two awakened defenders and ending the site. Solar Cell, supposedly scary. No, not at all. The Cerberus handles all three of these sites really quite comfortably. Remember, I am Heavy Assault Cruiser 5 and it does really help on the Cerberus, especially on some of those higher damage waves because you don't want to, you know, 37.5% additional shield boost compared to the standard 30 means you don't have to shield boost as frequently. So you stay much more cap stable. That additional 5% of the rate of fire as well means that you kill things a bit faster. I honestly think the Cerberus is one of those ships that kind of deserves getting to Heavy Assault Cruiser 5. It's a beautiful ship, and those bonuses do really help it out. So, there we have it. All four of the C3 sites run in a Cerberus. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and if you do have fits that you think are good for a specific site, go for it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're running for this particular ship in different anomalies. The reason that I've done this shit, uh, this fit the way I have, remember, is because I want one fit that does all four sites. But if you happen to have a particular C3 system, for example, that's nothing but Outpost Frontiers or Fortification Frontiers, you might decide that you want to go back and refit something a bit more specific to that particular site. And I'd love to know what you think of those. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end. Good luck ratting in JSpace out there. Love hearing all the stories that you guys drop in my comment section down below, so keep them coming. Come join me on Discord and fill in me more detail there. Wow, that sentence fell apart. Fill me in on more details there. Would love to know how you're getting on. Anyway, thanks for watching right the way through to the end on this one. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.